I was reached out by Troxy if I want to review their Crux 1. Should, sure, this looks like a really cute little printer. Why not? Here we have the Troxy Crux 1. <laughs> believe it or not, that slide goes on the first take. I know you won't believe me, but it's true. Let's go ahead and open up this little box. Oh, this is actually a lot smaller of a box than it would appear on camera. This is a really small printer. It's uh, got a 180 by 180 by 180 build volume. And here we have the in installation manual. So let's get ready to say instruction manual. That's installation manual. Now I'll be referring to everything, parts and everything, from what they say it in this installation manual. Everything has got pictures on it, and it's actually a lot simpler to put together than it looks. And here we have the parts bag, tool bag. And um, what's nice about this, it, everything just takes the same screws. Look, they included sample filament. Sample filament like that only creates knots. Toss it. And we have our standard uh, three prong power adapter. And what else do we got here? <laughs> I don't know about this. A shovel. I don't get it. Hey, wake up. <laughs> Finally, you returned my shovel. Anyways, this is actually pretty nice. You always want to have one beveled side and one flat side. Like I said, this is a pretty small printer. This is the lattice glass bed. It's a textured glass bed. <laughs> I got long fingers, but man, this is really small. And like I said, it's textured. Hot service, Troxy. And the last item on this layer, one layer is, well, they call it a filament rack. Okay. Um, you may call it a spool holder. And these two pieces are connected together by a wire loom, and there's everything. Now, let's uh, go ahead and open up the screws, and it takes the same screws for everything. Take your uh, Allen tool, Allen key, whatever you want to call it, X key. And now we're going to just go ahead and fasten, uh, I think, a total of five screws for the base and uh, the stepper motor. And that will be it just to secure your X axis in place. It is one lead screw. It's on a cantilever. And um, you'll see that there's actually a screw in the back there. I did get that a little bit later on. You have this nifty little handle that you're going to go ahead and put on the top. It takes two screws. And you would think that maybe a spool holder or something would go on top of there, but they're trying to make this really compact. Again, only two screws for the top. And then all we have to do is plug in the X stepper motor. And now we're going to install the filament rack. I think they really need to change that to just spool holder. But hey, you know what? It's their naming. Name what you want. And just make sure these are just nice and snug. And of course, we got some peely time. And remove it from the glass, too. However, in the instruction manual, installation manual, it says the glass goes on top of it, on top of the film. I'd never seen that happen. What we're going to go ahead is put these uh, four clips on. You will see their outlines there, where these uh, four clips, they have little screws, so you're not. Uh, um, like press pressure fitting them on so you just tighten the screws a little bit and lock it in place and don't forget to set the voltage for your country there's six screws and we're going to take a look at the bottom of this thing we have a 32-bit board with silent drivers and a beefy fan we got some nice crimped connectors 240 watt 24 volt power supply and let's go ahead and check these wires ah uh, Yep, that's tinned. I don't know. I don't know why these manufacturers just keep on doing this. Um, it's not that safe to be running, you know, machines with these tinned end wires. Either you you strip the wire and leave the strands alone, and you just twist them and you put them back into the connector, or you do this. You add a ferrule to it. Maybe they just think it's neater, but it's definitely not safer. And you know, I, I check these on every printer now, and. It, I, I, it has to be that they think that it's, it's just neater that way and they don't have to worry about strands 
you know, fraying as they're inserting it. But you know what? Just do it this way. Um, I know that a lot of uh, 3D printer manufacturers are going the ferro route. And you know what? If they don't want to do it, just strip the wire and put it in there. Just that easy. Anyways, I'll have links below for this uh, kit. I believe it's under $30 on Amazon. You get a lot, a lot of ferrules. So the last one here, I'm just going to do these four because all the other wiring looks great. So let's go ahead and uh, get this last ferrule on. After you're finished crimping and screwing them all in place, you may want to just give them all a little bit of a tug and make sure that they are not going anywhere. Since we're talking about PCBs and wiring, I think now's a great time to introduce our sponsor, which is PCB Way. Look, they have their 8th anniversary promotion going on. Are you looking for a PCB boards? Well, PCB Way has you covered. Not only do they do PCB boards at great prices, they also now have this new service called OEM. It's a one-stop solution. Basically, if you have a product that you want to get going, they can get that going for you. They can start from the prototype stage and bring it all the way to large-scale manufacturing. Contract manufacturing and assembly. Man, they can just do almost anything now. I mean, they even can do CNC machining and 3D printing. If you have some services, please give PCB Way a look up. And I want to thank you, PCB Way, for sponsoring this video. Now let's continue on with the Tronxy Crux 1 and see what this little 3D printer can do. And would you look at that? Magically reassembled. Look how cute and tiny this printer is. Can't get over that. Let's go ahead and plug it in and turn it on. It has a colored touchscreen, but when you power it on, it makes this chime. Almost like a Mattel's 80 pocket video game system. The sidelines, touchdown! Mattel Electronics Pocket Football with a built-in computer. And the moment you've been waiting for. Now this touchscreen doesn't have any advanced features, you know, basic, basic menu controls. Click on settings. This gives you the Marlin information. And then you can go back and let's click on status. Gives you the readouts of what's happening where for X, Y, Z, E and temperatures. And let's see language has eight different languages. We're going to just choose English. And we're going to go back and then you're going to click on tools. And you've got just four options here. You can just go ahead and move your axis axes around. And we can choose level. I was kind of hoping to see like a auto level in here, but it's just manual. Kind of hoping to see if you could add like a BL touch or something in there. And then the basically the last one is just preheating your hot end or your bed. Very basic controls. So we were at Murph and the wife has a filament addiction. And she bought over a dozen spools of filament. So we're going to try filament that we got there. It's a matte blue. <laughs> and you need to supply your own flush cutters. They don't come with this kit. So you want to cut the filament at like a 45 degree angle. And we're going to put it on and we're going to straighten out the filament so it can go through the runout sensor and um, through this long Bowden tube. This is a direct drive and usually you don't need a <laughs> Bowden tube like this. But uh, this is a compact little printer and I can see why they're using one. I'm going to go ahead and feed it through and you'll find that this is pretty interesting. The Bowden tube is in two parts here. And so that you could um, actually feed it in rather easily through the direct drive. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze it here and um, push it all the way through. Done. Now this is a manual bed level system. You can follow the prompts on the screen for, and you can use the paper test method. Go ahead and adjust the knobs like you normally would and um, you're ready to print. One of the nice features on this is that you can use a micro SD or the USB card reader. I am going to use the USB card reader route. Now I like to point out certain things here. Your belt tensioner for your Y axis is actually moving the stepper motor. <laughs> well, it is what it is. For your X axis, you're uh, going to have a belt tensioner. You only have one eccentric nut, and that's on the Z because that's the only one that has V rollers. 
the X and Y, they have what's called OSG speed roller guide rails. It's basically ball bearings on a guide rail. It's very, very smooth and stiff. So there's no way to adjust it. Your direct drive is a single gear with no tensioner. Now let's go ahead and kick off some prints, shall we? Now what I did was I tested all the files that were on the card. We start out with this uh, cat. Actually, it came out rather nice. Uh, you got some string between the ears. That's not too bad. Definitely see the fur. The detail is amazing. Really, really, really nice. And the only thing that you can see here is maybe some little over extrusion. I know the camera's not really picking it up all too well, but it's definitely there. Now let's go ahead and check out another model. This is a Dorimon, something like that. I don't know, it's a model that's on the card. I have no idea, but it's not too bad either, except something's going around the head. Uh, the feet look okay, but yeah, the head isn't that, that great. So I tried a different filament. Okay, let's try this like soap PLA. Yeah, it's from Polymaker, same thing. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that file. Uh, maybe it's the filament. Maybe it's... I don't know. We're gonna have to do some investigations here because you would think that the best models will be on these cards to print. So they have their own calibration cube. Uh, everything looks okay except for that bottom left hand corner. And this is oversized. I think it's like double the size. Looks really good. All the walls and everything. Except for that lower left corner. So, hmm, okay. And last is a, um, a fan duct that you could just go ahead and print out in any color you want. You could definitely see it's not the most perfect print either. Uh, you got some, um, I don't know, under extrusions, but I mean, overall, I mean, it's just a fan duct. So, okay. I think it's about time I read the manual. You just have to read the manual and press the right button. Here, Tronxy gives you the whole setup for your machine for Cura, or basically any uh, other slicing program that you're going to use. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's a uh, 8 for the retraction. Okay, but we're going to go with it. So I started out with these benchies. <laughs> and as you can see, I kind of stopped them. Uh, yeah, they're just not looking that great. Okay, did some fine tuning on, on the Cura profile, and yeah, it's still not that great. I think I have an idea. After looking at that direct drive, especially the retraction, that's just a lot for a direct drive. So I kept on bringing down the retraction. I wanted to make sure that my, you know, everything temperature, everything else was fine. And I worked with a lot of printers with direct drives and that was just too high. So I figured if I bring down the retraction to like 0.8, I think this will help out a lot. Now I did also try to find the models that, uh, that were supplied on the card. It took me some digging, but found very similar models so we could go ahead and test it with all these new settings. This Benchy was at a 2 retraction. Still really, really nice though. Um, it, it just has some little wisps in it. And otherwise, it's a very solid benchy. Now this next benchy is the 0.8 retraction. Very, very fine little wisps in there, I guess you would call them, but otherwise very solid overall. Very, you know, decent layer lines. You know, just an average benchy. Now, the cat. Okay, as you recall, we had just some stringing and a little bit of over extrusion there at the bottom. And look at this. It's almost perfect. However, I think this was like scanned. You can see that the fur just doesn't have the detail and that's on the model. It's not the printer. I mean, you can see it like right there, the what he's holding. Yeah, it's definitely, the detail is not 
as crisp. But it was the only one I could find. The next model is um, the Dorimon, I think you want to call it. I tried to find something as similar as I could. Okay, so we, we definitely have a big round head. It's the same character, but look at this. Look how, that is just really nice. You got the Z-Seam on the back though, but very, very nice. And I think this is more of a challenging model than the other one. You know, minus the keychain hook on the top, but very smooth. I mean, this model came out great. And next I just decided to do a standard calibration cube. Now you can argue that this calibration cube looks really nice, minus the lower left hand corner. And this looks really nice as well. Everything is, the corners are really sharp. Uh, the, the letters are nice and sharp. Bottom is nice and flat. Yeah, I would say, again, another nice print. Now I did do this clock spring model. It's pretty darn cool. Uh, the link is down in the description below. It's, this was actually done on the two retraction. So you're gonna have a little bit more wisps and stuff in it, but wow. The prints came out really nice. This took uh, about 48 hours, and uh, it's just a fun print. I really like the clock spring designs, and it was all print in place. Pretty cool. Now let's talk about some issues. Bed adhesion. <laughs> yeah, I tried, and I tried many times, and I cleaned the bed, and I said, well, just an Elmer's glue stick will work. Hey, it's back to school season right now. You can get these things for practically free if you want. Just a uh, little dab will do you, but on glass, good luck getting that off. It takes, uh, takes some effort. No advertising, it's just what I use. And look at that, face down, like glass. Get it? Yes, like glass. Filament runout sensor, look at that. Yeah, I know that you're compact, but that filament roll should probably be a little bit closer that way it's not rubbing. As I mentioned, this is direct drive. This is a single gear extruder and there's no tensioner and no way to manually feed filament. Now let's really talk about something here. The bed size. This is exactly 180 millimeters square. So there's a reason why the files didn't have a purge line because it automatically ejects on the side if you add one. And it would also knock off the clips on the side. So let's take a deeper look into this, shall we? As you'll see, I moved bed clips from the left side to the top side. And <laughs> this little uh, measuring card actually is your leveling uh, sheet. So I didn't see that until now. But let's take a look here. Um, yeah, we are losing about six millimeters. Actually more. We're losing almost 10 millimeters on the side here because of the bed clips and then the overhang here. Um, yeah, that's why um, the purge line did not, you know, lay on the bed. Here's a Prusa Mini, and let's go ahead and take off the glass and compare. Now let's go ahead and take the glass from the trunk seat and put it on top of the Prusa Mini. And would you look at that? It fits right in the parameters for the build area. So your build area is around 170 square because you have to have a way to fasten your build sheet down or glass. And since it's not magnetic, you're gonna lose that build volume. Is it 180? Yeah, it's 180, but good luck getting it. I think it's about time that we wrap this up. The video is getting kind of long. Now, I was able to get some really nice prints out of this after I figured out that uh, basically the retraction is way off. And this printer has some quirks to it, as you can see. But hopefully I've given you enough information in this video for you to decide if you're able to live with those quirks or not. So I really appreciate you tuning into Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning into Tripod's Garage. See you the next time.